Welcome to another Daily Devotions. It is September 7th. Today, Ezekiel chapters 25 through 27. This is uh, the second major section of the book, um, uh, chapter 25 through chapter 32. And uh, the subsection, uh, well, the, the major section is uh, deals with God's judgment of the nations. But specifically in the first subsection, chapters 25 through 28, uh, the judgment is upon Ammon, Moab, Edom, Philistia, Tyre, and Sidon. Uh, as in many of, of the other prophetic books, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Amos, uh, for example, Ezekiel includes a set of chapters in which judgments are directed at nations other than Israel. These uh, chapters appear to be directed at seven different nations, and yet it is clear that the nations themselves are not the real intended audience at all, uh, nor was, it, uh, was Ezekiel in a position to present these oracles to them. It is Israel in exile who is to overhear these judgments and to be comforted by the knowledge that God, despite the harsh judgments in the first half of the book, has not abandoned Israel to its enemies, but rather is holding these nations responsible for their actions, just as Israel is held accountable for its failures. The word of hope is this, that consists, uh, the word of hope is this, that consists of bad news for a neighboring country, albeit a historic enemy. Yet this is not an opportunity for smugness on Israel's part, rather God's judgment of the surrounding nations demonstrates that the Lord is sovereign over all lands, that God is in control of historical events that to Israel's eyes seem to be spinning out of control. The oracles against these nations signal that God's will is unfolding and Israel's fate is therefore not subject to the whims of any nations. For the exiles, this is a word of hope. But the hope is mixed with warning. The foreign nations are judged by their economic and military ambitions for their overweening pride and for the idolatry that undergirds all of it. This is particularly true as Ezekiel singles out Tyre, Sidon, and Egypt. Israel cannot but observe that divine judgment for the failings, uh, for these failings, the judgment, because the judgment is swift and complete. Israel's immediate neighbors, Ammon, Moab, Edom, and Philistia, uh, appear first among the seven nations. They are smaller than the nations further along on the list, and neither their presence on the international scene nor their transgressions are as prominent as those of Tyre, Sidon, and especially Egypt, which is the subject of the fiercest expressions of divine wrath. Significantly, Babylon is nowhere judged. Though it is the dominant imperial power of the moment, uh, it has deported the exiles, Ezekiel's audience, uh, to its own lands and is about to destroy the temple along with Jerusalem. Ezekiel understands Babylon to be operating at the Lord's behest. The empire does not act independently, but only as the means by which God punishes Israel. In much the same way as Isaiah understood Assyria to be the agent of the divine will in the 8th century BC. The small but economically prosperous island city-state of Tyre, situated off the coast of Lebanon, is the subject of a lengthy judgment, followed by an ironic mocking lamentation over its fall uh, in 26. Uh, 1 through 21 and 27, 1 through 36, and we will get to that chapter, those two things tomorrow. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, for the blessings of this day, for your gifts, for your presence, for surrounding us with your love and grace, we are thankful for all these gifts, most of all thankful for the gift of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as he surrounds us in this day and journeys with us, uh, may we travel in knowledge, may we travel along the way today in knowledge uh, that your love sustains us in Jesus name. Amen. 
See you later, friends.